Hi, I'm Martin Mitrucker. I'm not a professional, but I play one on YouTube. Today, we're going to encounter or tackle replacing a well pump, a deep submersible well pump. Okay. I had an issue with this pump probably about 10 years ago. We replaced the pump back then. I used a ATV winch with some trussing I made out of wood, some pulleys. I was able to replace the pump back then. Uh, it was a little bit of a hassle this year. Uh, my pump failed and I think the pump failed because it just was undersized. I did not get a big enough pump for um, my house and pumps are related to the depth that you go. My depth of my well is about 200 feet deep. I think the pump I had it was stretching it, it was reaching it. That's the furthest it could go and the issue with that is you you don't have any kind of cushion. So you want a well pump that's big enough that will exceed the depth that it's going to hang out in so that it doesn't have to work to its full potential or its full capability constantly to push the water up. Keep in mind, every 10 feet or every foot of water that you pump up, more and more weight is on top of that pump and it has to create more pressure to get the water up higher. 200 feet is a lot of pressure. Think about, I think water is what, 8 pounds per gallon? So when you're talking about 200 feet, that's a lot of weight, okay? So I'm gonna replace it with a much bigger pump. It's not really any bigger in size, it's just more horsepower. It's gonna be a one horsepower pump. I'm supposed to be able to go at least 300 feet deep, which uh, obviously I'm not. And, um, but it'll uh, give me plenty of room to uh, get plenty of volume at the depth that I'm gonna put the pump at, okay? Which is basically the same depth where it's at now. The only difference this time is instead of using my winch on my quad, I'm going to have a tower. It's basically a tower used to hoist speakers and whatever else you want to use. It has an electric winch, which would make it a lot easier for me. Plugs into AC, 110 volts, and I'll be able to pull the pump out. Hi. Uh, it's me again, Martin. We're uh, working on the well here. I got my outrigger system set up. Remember I said earlier, we use this type of trussing in the audio world. We use it to basically hang a line array of speakers. So um, it's got a nice winch on it. I don't know if you can see the winch. Uh, there's a chain here. And we have a winch motor right over there. That winch motor has tons of uh, power, a half ton. So uh, you're not gonna need any more than that to pick up th this uh, well pump, okay? This is very powerful and what's nice is it has a nice electric control that I can easily just press it down or up. So anyway, I took the lid off my, my well here. You can see the lid, There's I pulled some of the wire out and inside of it is a flange down about five feet. I'm going to get closer so you can see this. So the flange, this part goes through the pipe. On the outside of this, can you see this okay? On the outside of this, there's some threads here. This is what's going to end up being plumbed all the way into your house. And uh, the inside of the pipe is this surface here. And there's a part here that goes, that's threaded right here. This pipe goes all the way down to the pump, 200 feet below. So it's gonna hang, the pipe's gonna hang. There's an O-ring right here. This system is set up in such a way where it slides together like this, and it stops, and it seals, so it's tapered. So as it, as it slides down, it pushes that seal, and gives you a watertight seal, okay? For me to pull the pump out, you don't have to unbolt this. Don't make that mistake. It's uh, you end up digging four feet down, you unbolt it, and then you drop this inside the well and causes havoc. So don't do that. I know because I did that. So <clears throat> that was years ago. Now I'm smarter. The top of this has threads in it too. So what you do is you, you take a 10 foot pipe and you stick it down the hole and you line it up with the threads and you screw it in. And that's what we're gonna use to pull the pump out. So we're gonna grab onto that pipe and pull it right out. And this is all gonna come, come up. So, okay, now once we put the pipe on, we're gonna use these special 
clamps that I purchased at Menards. You can get these at any kind of place that has plumbing tools. This is a fixture they usually bolt to a, a table, a hard table that's attached to the floor or something like that. It's used for threading rod. You would you thread pipe, you put the pipe in here, you would clamp it in, tighten it up, and you would thread the rod. I use it to basically hold the rod. So I'm not gonna use it this way. I'm gonna use it this way. So the pipe is gonna go straight through like this. I'm gonna tighten it, it and my chain is gonna hang off this. I'm gonna pull the pipe up. Alright, I got the pipe on. You can take a wrench and give it a little bit of a snug, but then you need to loosen it up once you get it out of the hole. Now, I take one of my clamps. Put that on. This is the one that we're going to use. I got a bolt for the chain. I'll have to set that up. That's going to go on near the bottom too. Okay, as you can see, I got my wire out here. So as I pull the pump out, the wire is going to come up with the pump. Probably have to cut the tape off and pull the wire and push it aside. Every time I expose a new piece of pipe, I'm going to unscrew it, lay it on the ground, hook up the next one, and start pulling. But remember, you got to always have at least one clamp tight. Don't loosen both of them because if you drop the well, it's bad. Or the pump, it's bad. Just to show you how this works step by step, I have a winch with a control. I'm going to lower my clamp down to the pipe. Of course, there's a neighbor that has a loud car. should be over here helping me instead of racing this car. Anyway, so one of the key things is you want to make sure your clamp is tight enough um, and give it a little test before you release the other clamp for sure. Make sure that it is actually going to pick up the pipe and not slip. If you don't tighten this up, you risk dropping your well pump motor into the well itself and then you're in trouble. So. Uh, take baby steps basically. Now I can go ahead and raise this up. As I'm raising the wire, she's getting pushed to the side for now. Okay, I have a wire tie. I'm going to cut the wire tie off. Um, <laughs> Hi, Mally! <laughs> You're not supposed to use wire ties. I was told the wire ties can let the wire hang and then uh, it could pull on the connection 
Uh, I've been using wire I used the wire ties last time, seem to work okay, but I tighten them really tight. So it's up to you. Tape is what you're supposed to use. Okay. I cut the wire tie. Now I'm going to lower my lower clamp all the way to the base here to where it hits. Make sure it's good and tight and square to the pipe. Now I do a quick test with the with the winch. Just lower it a little bit. A little bit more until I get the weight completely off the winch. And now I know my pipe ain't gonna slide down so I can go ahead and loosen the other pipe. Slide this all the way down. Okay, and tighten it. Again, before you loosen the bottom one, put some weight on it, make sure it holds. Okay, you can usually tell when you're getting close to the end. My pipes were really rusty about two, three sticks ago. Uh, now I'm at the last stick is really wet, saturated, and um, a little bit cleaner than rusty. So there's a lot of water movement here. So you can look down the hole and see, sometimes it sticks on that flange that's down there, so you gotta be a little careful when you get to that point. Um, otherwise, once you get to this point, you just lift it out just like you've been doing with every other stick. Go ahead, up. Okay, that's good. Stop. All right, you can see, whoops. My pipe's falling. You can see that's my pump. Um, I can see part of the issue, it is loaded with rust uh, right where the suction is, which means it fights harder to do what it needs to do. So hopefully the new pump has a better screen to prevent that from happening. So, um, so we're essentially got it out of the hole. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, move this over and take the pump off and put the new one on. So, uh, I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, it's been a long day. Um, I don't know how many hours, maybe about three or four hours we've spent so far pulling the pump out of the ground. Now we got to prepare, pre <coughs> excuse me, prepare the new pump, put it in the ground. A couple things I want to point out. Okay, the pump itself, uh, again, look for quality pump. I like the Dayton pumps from Granger. Very good quality pump. <coughs> There are other good pumps, but that's not the only one. Most pumps come with um, an inch and a quarter inlet. Uh, I'm sorry, outlet. So this is where the water comes out of. And most pipes going into well pumps are one inch. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, but they make stainless steel um, sleeves or um, reducers, actually, pipe reducer. And you could buy that at Menards. Uh, Home Depot, whatever, any place that sells uh, any kind of well parts. And then you can insert this and your pipe is going to fit in there. Important note though, before you insert any kind of threaded stuff, whether it's stainless steel, brass, or the uh, polyvinyl chloride PVC pipe, uh, Schedule 80, you want to make sure you clean the thread. So I use something like denatured alcohol, and all you need is some alcohol or some kind of solvent based thing to basically wipe down the threads make sure you get all the oil off the threads because uh, the oil actually stop or prevent the uh, Teflon sealant from sticking any threads, every single thread you want some kind of Teflon sealant get a good quality Teflon sealant, none of that 
cheap crap. Spent a little extra money. Uh, this thick stuff here is the, the gooey thick stuff is going to be a lifesaver. And the reason it being is because your well pump, if you have any leaks anywhere, even if it's a slow leak, you reduce the pressure that's in that line. It'll actually backfeed. Even though there's a check valve in the pump, and you usually put a check valve in every so many feet, um, you remove some of that pressure in that line. So now when that pump kicks on, it's, it takes a few seconds to fill that pressure. You really want to keep that pressure in the line at all times. So, um, and the way you do it is through the check valve. But again, if you have leaks through the threads, you lose that pressure. Now let's talk about check valves. Check valves, the pump itself, has a check valve in it. So you don't need to install one at the pump, but they, they recommend a check valve like every 80 feet. So I'm gonna put in a check valve at 80 feet and then one at um, 160. And then, um, and then that way, you don't put all the water pressure on one check valve. You divide that pressure up. That way, the check valve at the pump will last throughout the life of the pump itself. You don't have to replace the pump because it starts to lose the pressure overnight or something like that okay um, so like I said check valve like every 80 feet pump has a check valve you don't have to worry about that there's two different types of pumps there's a three wire and a two wire pump a two wire pump does have a third wire it has the ground wire but it uses 220 voltage the reason why this is in a three wire is because three wire pumps have a control box that's external you have to mount it inside your house near your surge tank okay that third wire controls the speed of the pump speeds it up when it needs to slows it down when it needs it to this pump has 11 stages so and it automatically adjusts the stage according to demand this pump has that box built into it the electronics is built inside the pump itself so I only need two wires okay now the two wires are black that's your two power wires and you're going to want to buy some wire that's made for the pump that wire here submersible pump cable it's called again I got to pick this one up at Menards but any place that has kind of well pump parts should have this kind of cable okay and if you don't have enough cable you can add to the cable itself um, you can add to the cable itself make it longer if you use the proper method now just above the pump on the pipe you about four inches away from this you need this thing here which they call it sorry about that they call it an expandable torque arrestor what this does it goes around the pipe about four inches up and it tightens with these clamps you got these clamps on each side tighten it but you have to adjust it to fit the size of your pipe if your pipe is like six inches you, you squeeze it together and it expands to the size of your pipe so you want this snug as it's going down the pipe not overly snug so it's binding you want it to slide down but snug and the purpose of this is when the pump kicks in it gives it a twist and it jerks and you don't want the pump to jerk up against the wall rubbing the wires against the wall and chafing them and eventually they end up getting shorted so that we want to avoid that's what this is for after this what you need is these little spacers these spacers you put on you can put it on every it doesn't even matter you can put it on every 20 feet and they're adjustable but they fit most pipe most pipe most standard pipes to preset for six inch pipe plus um, that the pump fits inside and the internal pipe size is the one inch pipe for um, the actual well pipe itself the water pipe okay um, these just slide on sit basically about the area where the flange or the nut is per each pipe and what that does is it does the same thing it keeps the pipe from shaking around plus it gives you a spot for the wires to hold inside so they don't shape the wall of your pump so that's what it looks like pretty cheap I don't know it's like three four bucks at 
any of the stores that sell those pumps. Okay, you're going to need an um, adapter with a check valve. I told you about these check valves. Um, this check valve this directional. Be careful. This makes it look like this is the proper flow where it goes this way, but it's not. There is an actual arrow on this. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to move up close. Well, it's kind of dark. But there's an arrow that shows you the direction of flow. That's the direction of water. And if you put this in between a pipe, um, it's double threaded internal. So you're going to have to buy a nipple. Brass nipple's fine. Uh, again, you're going to make sure it's clean. Use Teflon tape. And like I said, one at 80, one at 160, and you should be fine. Okay. Um, Okay, the only thing left that I want to show you is uh, how to crimp the wires for this, okay? So now I have the wire right here. I spliced off a short section of wire, and we have a couple of things. You know what, can you bring the camera closer to me? Okay. These actually came with the pump itself. Is that viewable? Okay. So they, they came with the pump itself. So you have this and you have a piece of what they call heat shrink. This is black heat shrink. Okay. Really important. Put the heat shrink on first. If you forget to put the heat shrink on, it's a then you gotta cut off your flange or try to sneak it all the way from the other end. It, it's a pain in the butt. So you put the heat shrink on first, okay? You, you splice off enough where it's gonna, enough of the wire where it's gonna meet about halfway through. So I'm actually a little short, so I'm gonna take a little bit more off. Okay, now I'm closer to halfway. I have a tool here, um, Max Snap-on, they all make them. It's a crimping tool that's really made for this type of, of uh, electrical connector. It's a solid piece of electrical connector. It has a little dimple in this tool and the dimple is going to crush that and lock it in good and tight. Okay. It is so tight it won't come apart. I guarantee you this, this is a very nice method of, of locking down a good wire connection without using solder. Solder doesn't work all the time with things that vibrate because solder can actually stiffen the wire up so much that it, it'll crack. So with this crimp connector, it doesn't allow that to happen because it doesn't stiffen up. The only thing that's stiff is the actual connector itself. Now I take the other end of the wire. Now there's red and black, but there's two black wires. It's 220 volts, this pump is. So it doesn't matter which one goes to what. It'll work either way. It don't care. It's um, gender neutral. So the only thing you don't want to do is you don't want to connect the black or red to the green. You want green to green. That's the only important thing to know. So I'm going to slide this in. If it doesn't go all the way in, don't worry about it. The heat shrink will do a wonderful job of covering up anything that was missed. So. Get this prepared. Slide my wire in. I know it's dark. Slide my wire in. I'm going to crimp it good and tight. If you want to, you can move it up a little bit. Give it a little bit more longer of a crimp. If you're like really paranoid about it. Okay. So I take my tool off. Good and tight. All right, it ain't coming apart. You can almost lift the pump that way. I'm not going to test it, but you can almost lift the pump. Now the heat shrink, you're going to take like your finger and point toward it. Hold your finger still. Move your heat shrink so it's halfway. Equal distance on both sides. All you really need is a heat gun. Or you can use a lighter. The only problem with a lighter, you want to stay away from the wire as much as you can. And don't spend too much time on the heat shrink in one spot because you can actually melt the heat shrink uh, where it burns. We don't want to burn it, we want to shrink it. 
heat gun works the best if you don't have one harbor freight you know they sell all the neat stuff for pretty cheap um, and then once that shrinks up it's going to be good and solid other than that i'm going to go and assemble all this stuff and show you what it looks like um so we got it set up i put my uh piece of pipe or uh, uh reducer in here so i could put my one inch pipe into the pump use plenty of tough on sealant use some cleaner to clean the threads i also ran my wires up here i taped them i'm going to roll this over and see i put on my uh my rubber piece here it keeps it from bouncing up against the wall when it uh, torques up okay now obviously i still got adjusted so i'm going to have to put it in the hole and adjust it accordingly once i do that i'm going to tighten it now you can see i ran the wires through the slot because we don't want the wires to touch the side and not only did i tape it here but i taped it at this end too so they're somewhat tight in here they're not going to touch the wall of the pipe i'm going to continue to tape this all the way up you can see here here's my splices nice good weather pack spice splices that won't leak and I'm gonna make sure this is tight all the way up because you don't want the wires rubbing the wall because vibrations will eventually wear away and then you end up with um, basically electrifying your water and we don't want that obviously so um, I'm to the point now where I can actually start putting this in the ground um, basically I'm gonna hook it up to my winch and slide it part way in adjust this and start dropping it down and we're gonna reverse procedure so the only thing that we're gonna do other than tape this every so often we're going to put in our check valve at 80 feet and then i am going to put these on often so you can put one of these on every every 20 feet if you want it doesn't matter more is fine less if you do less it's not the end of the world when i took this pump out originally it had about three uh three total uh expanded like every two sticks when i say stick that's basically 20 feet of pipe okay so every 40 feet there was one you could have more often and like i said there's a spot to hold the wires from taping and that's it okay we're gonna get ready and put this in got the well all the way in wired it up here heat shrink the whole crimp uh, barrel crimps that's what they're called barrel crimps and heat shrink um, we kicked it on before we put it in the hole and water came out we let it run for a little bit until it looks somewhat clear okay no matter what you're gonna pick up a lot of sediment you disturbed the well there's a lot of stuff that moved around and you have a big surge of water that came through okay so um we slipped the well into the little coupler that's inside the pipe the slotted coupler and we turned it on we checked for leaks there was no leaks we still have no leaks the the well was holding so when it kicked off it stayed so now all that's left we're gonna lower the pipe or the to take the clamp off the pipe and we're gonna unscrew the pipe from the well. Okay, so now I have a little extra wire because I didn't know how much I need and 
I'm always paranoid, so if you take the, your wire and carefully fold it up, you don't really want to crimp it if you can avoid it. And then, do this right. Fold it over and put the excess right in the top here and you squeeze it so there's, there's not so much pressure on the, on the, on the side. And then all that's left, basically bolt the cover on and then you're done with that part but the um, the water and I'll show you the water in a second here you can see the water is still pretty dirty so I'll let it run a little bit longer and then probably what I'll do is I'll let it sit overnight and let everything settle in the well. Once it settles, um, and I'll turn it back on, run it some more, and then let it run through my house. Um, it, I do have a whole house filter and a water softener. That'll clean up most of this, but I'm gonna have to change my filter tomorrow. So I definitely want stuff to settle first before I put a brand new filter in. But once I do that, I'm done. The uh, well is done. It's working. It came up super fast, which is what I hoped for. Um, it actually cycled uh, while I was running the hose. In the past, when I ran the hose, the pump would just run continuous until I stopped using the hose. Now, it uh, it actually cycled. So that means I'm producing more water than I'm using, which is exactly what I was hoping for because I bought a good pump. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually getting clearer as we, you know, speak. And we're done. So, uh, anyways, Martin McTrigger. Um, I'm not a professional, but I play one on YouTube. And this is a do-it-yourselfer home well replacement. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, provide feedback and uh, welcome your comments. I know I'm not perfect. But I think I did a pretty good job being that I've never done this before other than one other time. So, all right, thanks guys. See ya. than a winch, a tower winch. So it'll do the same thing. I would have it perfect.